Hello. This lecture will talk about how to calculate and analyze trusses structure. Examples will be given. Remember to subscribe to my channel and more information related to civil engineering, structural engineering, and foundation will be provided. Your subscription is important for me to continue making videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. In this video, we'll take a detailed look at trusses. Trusses are one of the first types of structure those new to engineering will tackle. There are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, the truss is a very simple structure, relatively easy to understand and analyze. By deploying some simple mechanics, truss analysis allows us to trace the load path through a truss and visualize how forces are being transmitted through the structure and back to its supports. A structure that is made up of slender members. Connected at joints which are in pinned connections is a truss structure. In theory, the pin joints provide no rotational resistance and behave as hinges. As such, moments cannot be transmitted from one member into adjacent members. Only forces can be transmitted through nodes. The first assumption of truss structure is that loads are applied to the joints of the truss, but not directly to the members. In other words, the members only carry axial forces. The internal force in each member is constant and a member can be either in tension or in compression or zero force members. It can be designed appropriately for engineers if it is able to determine the axial force in the members of a truss. In this video, I cover the two main methods for solving the axial load of members. Which are the method of joints and the method of sections? The method of joints involves applying the equilibrium equations to solve the internal forces acting on every joint within the truss. The method of sections involves creating an imaginary cut through the members of interest and applying the equilibrium equations to the external and internal forces. The tower crane is a great example of a truss structure used to efficiently transmit large loads. Let's take the simplest form of truss as an example. The 50k in force applied at node B must be transmitted through the structure back into the pin supports at A and C respectively. We can think of the external loads traveling along a load path. The engineer's job is to evaluate the load path and make sure the structural elements along that path can withstand the stresses induced by the loads being transmitted. Using the three equations of statics, the reactions at A and C are easily evaluated. Now that we've clarified what a truss is and the concept of a load path describing the transmission of forces through the structure, the next task is to work out how to identify the forces along the load path. In other words, we want to be able to work out the forces developed in each of the members in response to external loading. We'll focus on two similar techniques that make use of the equations of static equilibrium. They are method of joints and method of sections. In both cases, we must first determine the support reactions for the structure. Using the previous example, we have determined the joint reaction. The method of joint requires us to evaluate the sum of the forces meeting at a joint. These forces can be resolved into two orthogonal, which is mutually perpendicular in directions that allowing us to evaluate two equations of force equilibrium. Thus we have two equations from which we can determine two unknowns. So, using the method of joints we can only start at a joint that has a maximum of two unknown member forces. For this simple structure, we can consider any of the three nodes. We'll start with node B. We isolate the joint by cutting the members meeting at that joint. Making these cuts we reveal the internal member forces. For now labeled as TBN and TBC. Where the T indicates we are assuming that the forces are tension forces. In other words, if the values of T is positive, it means the members are in tension. In the following analysis, Note that basic geometry gives us the angle of BC equals 53.1 degree. Now consider force equilibrium of joint B. It gives me a huge support and motivate if you would subscribe to my channel. There are further information related to structural mechanics, foundation and anything related to civil engineering in the future. Remember to like this video and I would feel great appreciation for your subscription to this channel. Notice here that evaluates to a positive number and therefore, our assumption that the force in member BC is a tension force is correct. Now evaluating horizontal force equilibrium. 
Here the negative value tells us that the force in member B is actually opposite to our initial assumption and therefore is a compression force. This completes the analysis of this simple truss. It is worth reflecting on the direction of the arrows indicating tension and compression here. For member of B in compression, the yellow force arrows point outward, as if to resist a force compressing the member. By the same analogy, the force arrows for member BC point inwards, as if to resist a force trying to pull apart or stretch the bar. That's the method of joint. We've only demonstrated it so far for a very simple truss. But the process is exactly the same no matter how big your truss gets. As long as you can identify a node within your truss structure, that has no more than two unknown member forces passing through the node. Now we can consider the other tool to solve the member force and truss. The method of sections. Instead of isolating a single joint, the method of sections involves us making an imaginary cut through the entire structure. In doing so, we reveal the internal member forces and the members are playing cuts through. We can then evaluate equilibrium of either of the two substructures created by the cut. This method of structural analysis brings into play a third equilibrium equation. Because all of the forces acting on the substructure no longer all pass through the same point, we can now consider the sum of the moments about any point which is our third equation. Since the structure is in a state of static equilibrium, the sum of the moments and forces in x and y directions must equal zero. So we now have three equations of statics at our disposal. The key thing to remember with the method of sections is that our plane cannot cut through more than three members with unknown member forces. As usual, the best way to understand this technique is by working through an example. So consider the simple Warren truss here subject to point loads at nodes B and D. As with any statically determinate analysis, the first task is to determine the support reactions. We'll start by considering the sum of the moments about point A, which must equal zero. We'll assume clockwise moments are positive. The results are as shown. Next we can evaluate the sum of the forces in the vertical or y direction to determine the remaining unknown vertical reaction. Assuming upward pointing forces are positive. We have the results in the vertical direction as here. And by inspection we can say that the horizontal reaction is that. To demonstrate the method of sections. Let's start by considering a vertical section. Cutting the structure between nodes G and C. This will cut through members BC. CG and GF which will reveal the internal forces in those members. As we do for the method of joints, we'll assume these forces are tension forces, and therefore the force arrows point away, or out of the cut member. The substructure to the left of the cut must now be in a state of static equilibrium. Under the influence of the externally applied forces, reactions at an internal member forces, TBC, TGC and TGF, so as we have calculated support reaction before we have three unknowns and three equations. We're now able to solve for the member forces. We'll start by using the moment equation and evaluating the sum of the moments about point G. Point G is a good starting point because two of our unknowns pass through it and so will disappear from the moment equation. Leaving only TBC that we can directly solve for. Now the fact that TBC evaluated to a negative number means that the force arrow actually points in the opposite direction, meaning that TBC is a compression force. Next, if we evaluate the sum of the forces in the vertical y direction we can solve for TGC. And finally we can determine the remaining unknown TGF by considering horizontal force equilibrium and assuming forces to the right are positive. Finally, we can solve for it. The method of sections is a helpful technique. Because we can make a cut anywhere within the structure to determine the member forces, we don't need to know any of the other internal member forces. So for example, we didn't need to know what the forces were in members of B, a G, or BG before we made our cut. If we were only using the joint resolution method, we would have to work our way from the support nodes towards the area of interest and evaluate the forces at each node along the way which could become tedious for a larger structure. Thank you for watching. It gives me a huge support and motivate if you would subscribe to my channel. There are further information related to structural mechanics, foundation and anything related to civil engineering in the future. Remember to like this video and I would feel great appreciation for your subscription to this channel.